Hi, everybody. So welcome to our first podcast in the process of protein synthesis. Here we're going to spend some time learning about RNA, um, looking at the different players, if you will, um, in our little protein synthesis production. And uh, from there, we'll have a second podcast on going from the RNA piece to the protein. But here we're going to spend some time talking about the part that takes us from the DNA to the RNA. So let's learn a little bit about the important RNA players. Now RNA super important, um, more important than we ever originally thought. We thought it was just sort of a, um, a messenger, a go-between. Um, it turns out RNA plays a major, major role, and a lot of our DNA is there purely to code for pieces of RNA. But we're going to talk about the big ones here. So first, we know that the cells that need to create a whole lot of protein are going to have tons of RNA because it is vital. Um, it is our other nucleic acid and we're going to get into some of the differences between that and DNA and talk a little bit um, about how we get there. All right, so a little bit about basics of RNA. Very similar to DNA in terms of structure. The monomer, of course, is the nucleotide, right? Okay, so it's still that three-part piece, okay? Um, we have a sugar, we have a phosphate, we have a base. Only in this case, our sugar isn't deoxyribose. Our sugar is just ribose, hence the RNA piece. We still have our phosphate group, and then we have our bases, okay? We still have <coughs> adenine, we have guanine, we have cytosine, but note that we now have a U. Here is a fifth nitrogen base that exists. Um, it only exists in RNA, and this base is called uracil. Okay, so a little different. We have adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. So already we have some big differences. We've got the sugar is a difference. Okay, we have uracil, no T in RNA. And instead of being a double helical strand where you've got the ladder, right, the sides of the ladder and the rungs, imagine if I took a buzzsaw right down the middle of the DNA and had and just took it and unwind it, right? So you only have one side of the ladder. That's what we would call a single strand helix. And that's what RNA is. It's single stranded and way shorter in terms of length because we only use pieces of DNA to actually create the segments of RNA that we need. However, remember your base pairing rules, they will come into play. So here's some of our RNA pieces that we are gonna spend some time talking about. We have our RNA. Our RNA is what we refer to as ribosomal RNA. This is the RNA that makes up the bulk of the ribosome organelle and we're gonna happily get to know ribosomes really really well here they are the ones that so it's not just the rna but rna plus protein equals a ribosome it's a two-part piece um, and here you can see that there's a larger segment over here and a small segment and they link together to create the whole ribosome itself here we have our smaller subunit our larger subunit again they attach. So an, an RNA piece is actually, you know, it's a um, two chunks of really tangled up RNA and protein. It is, it is essential. At this point in time, there is no living thing that can create proteins without having ribosomes. Of course, you know, kind of <laughs> the deal that if a ribosome is made of RNA and protein um, and it's necessary for protein, how did the protein get made that makes up the ribosome initially? So that is a very interesting question in the grand scheme of how we got here. <laughs> um, but suffice it to say, um, for what we know, current life, all that jazz, ribosomes are essential for making protein. Messenger RNA, okay? Messenger RNA, this mRNA, big deal. This is the RNA that takes the genetic code from the DNA built directly from the coding gene on DNA and is what's going to ultimately be thread through the ribosome. If you remember the recipe, right, that floated down <laughs> to our little guys on the boats, the recipe, that's what that was. That was the messenger RNA that took the information down to the ribosomes to build it. Okay, so it takes the code from the DNA to the ribosome, builds it up. Just like we mentioned how DNA is read in three base chunks called triplets, the complementary three base sequences on RNA, okay, is called a codon. And each one of those codons codes for that particular amino acid. So we mentioned like we have a triplet, the DNA triplet, okay, is equivalent to an RNA codon, which then equals that one amino acid, okay? And we're gonna talk through that. So here would be a single-stranded piece of RNA, and here is each one of those codons that I mentioned, because this is RNA, so we're talking codons. Note the fact that you don't see any thymine present, 
okay, because there isn't any. There is no such thing as a thymine RNA nucleotide that exists. There's only uracil, um, but we still have adenine, guanine, and cytosine. So how do we create RNA and, well, really any RNA, but in particular messenger RNA? It's produced by a process called transcription. Now think of what to transcribe something means to take something that's written and rewrite it, okay? So I'm not gonna change the meaning of it, but my handwriting is going to be different, right? Um, it's going to not look exactly the same. That's the idea. I take the DNA language and I'm rewriting it in RNA language. Okay, RNA polymerase is going to you know, bind to what we call a promoter sequence on the DNA molecule, the beginning of the gene, if you will. So RNA polymerase comes in, binds in, and helps to um, catalyze all of this. Okay. The RNA polymerase unwinds the DNA, just that section, not the whole thing, just the gene itself that we need to transcribe, matches up RNA nucleotides by base pairing rules to the open side of the DNA. Now it's still built just like any nucleic acid in the five prime to three prime direction. So the three prime to five prime piece of DNA is what we use as our um, section that we're gonna code. Running it down with a temporary attachment you know, in terms of base pairing to build that RNA, okay, um, with one side. And then it will s separate off and create. So let me show you what I mean by this, okay? Here it is. Here's my DNA, okay? RNA polymerase comes in, unwinds, okay? So here, the side that's actually being transcribed is my three prime, if I go down here to five prime, because we build in the five prime to three prime direction, even on RNA. So here's my, that side. Now, it's going to come in, this side has already been created, you know, and then just detaches, matches up with complementary base pairing, and will literally pull in and zip out, okay, and that's it. And then as soon as it's done, this will rewind back up, okay. So for example, if on my DNA, let's say that this is an A, T, C on the DNA, the nucleotide basing, that the base pairs that will attach to that, since there's no T, I got a U, A, G is the complement on that side. And it will build through and then come right off. So here it is again in just, so here it is again in just sort of a laid out, real simplistic way. My direction of transcription, right? This is my DNA side. Again, mentioning note the prime, prime direction. Growing side of RNA transcript comes in. This is what I'm building up. T, if I have a T, then an A comes in. If I have a G, C, an A, oh, that's a U, right? So keep that in mind, G, C, so still base pairing rules. So it's all coming in and being built. And once this is just a temporary connection as it's being built, as soon as it's a little far down, it literally just detaches and comes back. Once that's done, the messenger RNA strand then be is processed. This is why we can have only you know 20 25,000 genes and have over 100,000 proteins because I can take that one gene process it differently in the mRNA and get a different protein outcome on the other end so we process it and some attend you know enzymes are going to attach to what we call a guanine cap at the start and they're going to go through and they're going to snip out segments and basically restitch together the messenger RNA piece so that I have a new connection okay and more other, you know, we're, and we're going to have other enzymes that are going to attach to what we call poly A, many A, you know, like adenine, 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 adenine <laughs> um, poly A tail, and then use that as sort of the start and the finish to cut and modify that mRNA. All right, so as the mRNA is processed, introns, okay, are going to get cut out, and exons, it's not X like exit, which is what we think, you got to think sort of the opposite there. Exon means the section that's going to be expressed are then spliced together so the introns gone exons expressed spliced back together and then we have the working mRNA transcript so here's the idea you've got the first sort of pre mRNA that gets created from the gene you can see here that I have the sections that I'm going to use okay there are my caps okay there's an exon intron exon intron exon so we're gonna take these pieces and we're gonna get rid of them, gone. We're gonna take these, splice them together, and this will actually be the functioning mRNA transcript that's gonna go out to the ribosome and attach on. So, happily, somebody else figured out how to read these things. So we take the mRNA transcript and we can actually read it in terms of those three base codons. Um, for example, AUG, which is a normal starting 
codon, and we can figure out what amino acid that actually codes for. Remembering that we read them in threes because that gives us 64 different combinations. And if I look here, you literally take the first, here's my first base, second base, third base. So I look for my first base, A. I come over here, here's my A. All right, so I know I'm gonna deal in this row. Second base, U. I go up to the top, I find the U. All right, so there's my U. So now I come down and find the intersect of this column and this row. So here's, I'm somewhere in here. I go over to the other side, third base, G. I come across where all three of these intersect is going to be the amino acid. So AUG codes for methionine. So that's how you read codon charts. They are read from the RNA, um, and that will tell you what the amino acid sequence is. You're going to notice a few things like these. There are three of them. They're called stop codons. Think of them like the period at the end of a sentence. So at the very end of an mRNA transcript are a, well, is a sequence, is a codon, that lets the ribosome know to detach, okay, so it stops creating the actual amino acid chain. And that's where we're going to go to next, is looking at how we go from that mRNA transcript to the actual amino acid sequence. So we'll be practicing with this, but um, take a look, make up a couple of codons, and see if you can't figure out what the amino acid is that um, it codes for. So the final RNA that we're going to talk about today before we get into proteins is going to be tRNA or what's known as transfer RNA. And this is an important RNA piece because this is the RNA that actually um, connects to the amino acid and brings it, transfers it, to the ribosome. So it makes tRNA a little bit different from other RNA pieces is that it is actually a folded strand of RNA and it comes out kind of looking um, this sort of triple fold. Um, we call it a clover leaf. I'm sure realistically that's not really what it is, but we kind of cartoon it like that. So if we take sort of that single strand, it kind of folds and gets held together, you know, kind of like that. So one end of it is going to attach to the amino acid. Now the part that's going to be really, really important is the three base pairs that stick up on the middle um, leaf, if you will, the clover. Those three base pairs are going to be complementary to our codons, and that's how it's going to know, know, if you will, which amino acid to bring over. So here's what I mean by that clover. So you can see three parts, they get attached by um, complementary base sequencing that's going to hold them together with hydrogen bonds at very particular places, um, but it's still a single-stranded RNA molecule. And here is that really, really important three base sequence on the middle leaf, we call that the anti-codon, okay? Because it is complementary to the codon and makes a momentary connection there to know what amino acid right here that it would bring over, okay? So that's where it attaches, all right? And again, the anti-codon is a complementary three base sequence to the mRNA codon that's threading through the ribosome. And in the next podcast, we're gonna show you how all of this works. So there's sort of a space filling model idea of what it might look like, okay? Um, because of the twists and everything, it connects and creates this sort of really, to me, it looks more like a blob, but we get the idea of that three base piece, you know, in that middle shape. And again, it's really, really important to bring the amino acids to the protein synthesis site. Um, it, you know, they float around attached to particular amino acids. All right, so with that being said, you've met all of the RNAs. Uh, we've got an idea of how RNA is made, and now we can put all of those players and those pieces together um, in the next podcast to talk about how we go from actually the transcription part into the translation piece of protein synthesis. So take it easy. Thank mm -hmm. you.